Hello, my name is David Hall from Xylem. I just want to take a couple of minutes to talk to you about pH. pH is the second most common parameter done in the laboratory after temperature, but probably the most misunderstood. So, my question to you is, do your pH electrodes last as long as you expect them to last? And do they work as well as you would hope? And if the question is no, it's probably one of two things. That's because your pH electrode is not the right electrode for the solution you're putting it in, or certainly not the best one. And secondly, it's maybe because you need to store it or look after it in a different way. So firstly, um, just very quickly, there are two main types of probe. Uh, there are lots of others for specialist applications, but the main two types of electrode are a gel probe or gel and plastic. So that means it's got a plastic body. It's got a gel three molar KCl electrolyte inside. It's a combined pH and temperature. So there's a sensor at the end. Uh, we have the DIN connector here and a banana connector for the temperature. So gel probes are uh, easy to look after. They're robust. Um, they're fairly low cost as well. So they tend to be the option that a lot, a lot of people will go for. Alternatively, if possible, it is often better to use a glass one. Um, this one has a cone end to give it some rigidity and some robustness, but the glass probes have three molar KCL inside. Uh, there's a slider for you to top it up. Must make sure you top it up and don't let the electrolyte get too low in the probe. This probe again, pH and temperature combined, um, DIN connector, sorry, a BNC connector and a, a banana for the temperature. So in terms of the electrodes, whatever it is, this is a glass uh, analog probe. We also have uh, the digital probes. Now what's important, this is the wireless digital probe connected to, to a meter behind me. Um, what's important is that the, the way in which the probe works is, is exactly the same, whether it be a digital or analog. So the, the inside of the probe is exactly the same. So it's very important that you look after it, you maintain it. Glass probes tend to be better for more awkward solutions, um, difficult, more con highly contaminated solutions. Um, you've got a platinum membrane in the end of a glass probe here, uh, and that's fairly unique on the market and very resilient to um, awkward and difficult chemicals. So the probe by default should last longer and work better. These tend to respond more quickly and stabilize more quickly. But it's equally as important that you look after the probe um, when you're not using it. So make sure you store them, generally speaking, in three molar KCL solution. Um, also glass probes do get build up on the outside of things like protein materials if you're using tris solutions and the like. So <clears throat> pepsin solution is ideal to, to keep that uh, build up uh, away and then stop the probe from again starting to not respond as quickly as you would like. If you don't have three molar KCL solution to store your probe in, maybe you've run out, um, pH4 is the next best solution or then pH7. Um, standard buffer solutions um, are okay for short periods of time. If you don't have any of those, maybe tap water for a very short period of time, but never store your electrode in deionized just to still water because you'll kill it very, very quickly. So I hope that's of help. Um, we'll do more videos to go into a little bit more depth about calibration, etc. But the, the critical thing with a pH electrode is to choose the right probe for the application for which you're using it, and then to make sure you look after it uh, ongoing, make sure it's topped up, uh, and you calibrate it obviously on a very frequent basis. So I hope that's helped. Thank you.